Joining me now, former New York City Police Commissioner Howard Safer. Howard, always great to see you. Want to get your perspective on this as more details um, are starting to emerge. You know, when you stand back and look at the problem that we have with crime in this country, with mass shootings in this country, 50 people were shot here in New York City over the weekend as well. It's it's not just one place, one area, one type of person. I mean. Some people will say it's all about the guns, we need tighter gun control. Others will say it's about red flags, the community's support, uh, the breakdown of society that is not creating a safety net to catch these individuals, the fact that we've defunded our police. Where do you stand on all this? Well, it's all of those things. But the, the truth is there are lots of things that we can do to prevent many of these mass shootings. Here we had an individual who was actually confronted by the police. Weapons were taken from him. They knew he had issues that he wanted to kill people, and it was reported nowhere. Mm. The problem with a red flag law is unless you have the data being put into the red flag systems, you're just going to have nothing but after action reports rather than actually preventing things. Right. Also, the atmosphere. And you're talking specifically about the incident that Mike Tobin brought up in his report with respect to the knives, right? That that could have been a red flag. But there were also the social media posts um, indicating that this was a troubled individual as well. Well, you know, I, I have this thing about social media. Uh, they can instantly, with an algorithm, decide whether or not your political views are the same as, as theirs and take you off their network. They could do the same thing with... Uh, people on social media posting threatening posts and notify police, but they don't do it. We should be requiring them to do that. Our understanding so far uh, of the facts that have been released, Howard, were, was that this individual was able to legally purchase a gun. Um, but clearly, that wasn't necessarily the issue, right? You look at the mental health problems that... Um, surround a person like this that would commit a tragic crime like this and you say to yourself how is it that nobody spoke up well that's a good question but you know there there are ways to fix that as well you know he legally purchased this automatic semi-automatic uh, assault rifle if i have been pushing for very long and it's not a terribly hard fix you can get buy a machine gun legally in this country if you go to a police station, get fingerprinted and photographed and have a real background check done mm -hmm. and pay $200 to get that machine gun, why not put the assault weapons in the same classification? That way, an individual who wants to get an assault weapon would have to be scrutinized by the police rather than just walk in and put $1,000 down to get the gun. So, you know, there, there are lots of things that can be done. And then, of course, we have to change the atmosphere. Right. You know, with all of these le leftist district attorneys, with all of these no bail laws, right. we have basically sent a message to criminals that they can do whatever they want. Right. Well, look but what happened in Chicago this past week. There are no consequences for these kinds of actions, and, and yet and we see these kinds of events taking place across the country time after time, and yet nothing, nothing really changes with respect to the leadership, with respect to how we treat our police, with respect to, as you said, the DAs putting people away and making sure that the message is sent, if you do this, you will go to jail. Um, Howard, we're out of time, but it's always great to have your insight. Great to see you. Thank you. Good to be with you.